A fragile wall protects us from the icy apocalypse of the polar vortex. Why this wall could break and bring us the one massive cold spell you will learn in this video. So be sure to stay tuned until the end. Then I am galactically pleased with an ice cold thumbs up and a comment because this helps us get the YouTube algorithm to show this important topic to even more people. Thank you very much everyone and welcome. A gigantic wall that protects us from the icy hordes behind it. Yes, we definitely live in the world of Game of Thrones. So's Eos. The wall is the polar night jet stream and the icy danger beyond the wall is the polar vortex. I know, I'm throwing a lot of terms at you right now, but we will clarify everything gradually, no worries. So what is the polar vortex? It is a large area surrounds both of the Earth's poles always, even if the polar vortex weakens in summer and gets stronger again in winter. The term vortex refers to the air masses that circulate near the poles and are confined in a circle by a jet stream, so basically like a hair whirl, only without hair, and at the north and south poles, so actually not like a hair whirl at all. I really need to come up with better comparisons. The Earth's axis is tilted. To be precise, it is tilted at 23.27 degrees, and this tilt gives us the seasons because the angle of incidence of sunlight differs throughout the year. Near the poles, this leads to the phenomena of polar day when the sun no longer sets in summer and polar night when it no longer rises in winter. I'm always in Tromsø in northern Norway in December, and I can highly recommend this trip to you because seeing the northern lights in the polar night, this is truly an absolutely impressive experience but I can already hear some of you getting outraged. Leave me alone with your vacation photos, man. What does that have to do with the polar vortex? Good question, since the sun barely reaches the North Pole in winter. As we have just established, temperatures there drop massively, especially in November and December, both on the ground and in the middle atmospheric layer, the stratosphere. The air at an altitude of about 30 kilometers drops to an incredible minus 60 to minus 80 degrees Celsius over the North Pole. Now you might wonder why this cold air pocket doesn't just drift away from the pool and make the rest of the Earth shiver with the icy winds. The reason for this is that the White Walkers are trapped because a strong wind current forms around this ice cold air, the polar night jet stream. This jet circles the Arctic region and separates the polar vortex from the planet's mid-latitudes. It acts as a barrier for air transport and isolates the stratospheric air over the Arctic. In other words, the polar night jet is the wall that protects us from the icy dangers from the north. This applies not only to the northern hemisphere, but also to the southern hemisphere. The southern hemisphere polar vortex also extends through the stratosphere and into the mesosphere, but in contrast to the north vortex, the south vortex is stronger, larger, and longer lasting. In addition, temperatures are colder and ozone levels are lower than in the north, so far so good, but the Game of Thrones analogy can be taken even further because it may happen that the wall protecting us does not hold and the invasion from the deadly icy realms beyond begins. This is called a polar vortex event or polar vortex disruption, especially during winter, the polar the night jet strengthens the polar vortex and traps the cold air around the poles. Due to various factors, the polar night jet can be weakened or even split in two. Can then lead to cold air masses from the polar vortex suddenly descending south into lower latitudes and beginning their icy reign of terror. Okay, that may be slightly exaggerated. Here we see an impressive example of how, in December 2022, the polar cold migrated far south due to a polar vortex disruption and then even reached Florida around Christmas. This clearly shows the power of the polar vortex. It can even put a freeze on Florida, which otherwise seems to be in the Caribbean, with its icy temperatures. And that means, of course, that we in Europe are just as much in the catchment area of these frosty powers as soon as the polar night jet gives way. This raises the question of what causes this jet stream to weaken. It cannot be due to the main factor that causes it, the Coriolis force. That air currents move from the equator towards the pole, and due to the Earth's rotation, these currents are deflected towards the east. This deflection of the airflow due to the rotation of the Earth is described by the Coriolis force. And this effect underlies all jet streams, and as long as the Earth's rotation does not stop, which we hope will not happen, the jet streams will never stop either. There are additional factors that influence the jet streams. In the case of the polar night jet, it is primarily the massive temperature difference. 
Within the boundaries of the low pressure system, where the polar vortex is at work, it gets incredibly cold in winter. Warm air flows from the equator towards the outside of the vortex and bounces off the outer boundary. And this clash of cold and warm temperatures between the air inside and outside the polar night jet, which in turn strengthens it. Under normal circumstances, this wall holds and is pulled by the extreme forces that act upon it. But various factors cause it to change course, or in extreme cases, even break apart. This can happen, for example, if the pressure difference decreases because the temperatures from the south are colder, or the temperatures inside the vortex are warmer than usual. Global weather phenomena such as La Nina also have an impact on ocean temperatures and thus on the jet streams. Even solar activity is a factor that affects the polar night jet. And when it is disturbed, it begins to seek detours and to curve, allowing the previously trapped air of the vortex to travel further south. In extreme cases, the polar night jet can even collapse completely for a certain period of time. This is usually visible through a rapid temperature increase in the atmosphere over the polar region of up to 50 degrees in a few days. Some of you are wondering about the temperature increase. Huh? I wanted to see White Walkers. The warmer temperatures arise because the polar vortex is no longer confined to a small area, but is spreading out. This makes it warmer at the pole, but where the icy air of the polar vortex flows, it naturally gets colder. This is also known as sudden stratospheric warming, SSW for short. Cold air flows south, meets layers of warmer air, the whole system of polar jets collapses. And suddenly, places like Germany, which are usually safe on the warm side of the polar night jet, are besieged by the white wanderers, the polar vortex. Take a look at this incredible shot taken by astronaut Scott Kelly from the ISS in 2016. We can see perfectly where the polar vortex begins and how powerful this icy area of air is. Kelly wrote, the polar vortex looks cold even from up here. Brrr. And now imagine this wall breaks and you are overwhelmed by these icy air masses. Of course, it's not the end of the world and it happens regularly. In 2009, for example, there was a record winter due to a polar vortex event. The average temperatures from winter 2009 to 2010 were one and a half degrees below the average. For a long time, large parts of Germany were covered by snow, which lasted in Berlin from December 30th to February 26th, i.e. 59 days without interruption. And it will happen again. There are indications that polar vortex disruptions will become more frequent because rising temperatures in the Arctic could cause the temperature difference between the polar and mid-latitudes to decrease. However, this so-called temperature gradient plays a crucial role in maintaining the polar vortex. Ironically, warmer temperatures could lead to more unstable conditions of the polar vortex, thus giving us more record winters. When exactly the next polar vortex event will occur cannot be said yet. But one thing is certain. Winter is coming. I will keep you updated, but that can only happen if the White Walkers don't catch me. And you subscribe to my channel. And as I know from the YouTube statistics, over 70% of the viewers have not subscribed to the channel. It's completely free, helps me a lot, and you don't miss any videos. So guys, everyone press the subscribe button diligently. That would be galactic. By the way, not only cold threatens us, but maybe also a super hot, gigantic explosion. Because volcanologists are looking very worriedly at the Phlegraean Fields, a supervolcano under southern Italy that can easily compete with Yellowstone. If an explosion were to really happen here, it would have massive effects on the entire continent and beyond. Why the experts are concerned, and when we have to expect an eruption, you can find out in the video shown, and if you want to support my work and the channel, then always feel free to watch the older videos. There are still many exciting topics lurking there. Otherwise, I'd say see you in the next video. Take care, friends.